Hey, it's Dee with DCS Photography, and I wanted to make a video going over um, Adobe Bridge and um, how I set it up. Adobe Bridge is included with um, your CS Photoshop CS purchase. Elements does not have it. Elements has an organizer, which is completely different. Um, they both are for or organizing, and that's what um, Bridge is for. It's made to help you organize your folders and your images and you can go through and you can rate them and assign keywords. It's sort of like how Lightroom is set up but this is what um, Photoshop's always used before they made before they made Lightroom. So what I'm gonna do is show how I first how I set mine up. This is generally what it looks like when you open it up if you never open it up. This is when it's reset it's got all kinds of, to, to me, visually, it's too much going on. The thumbnails are small. I don't know. I just can't. There's too much for me. So what I do is um, I go and close everything out. And I close. I don't need my metadata. Or keywords. If there's any of those folders that you prefer, this is how I set mine up. But you can go and open up, like if you would like your keywords, you want to do keywording, you can take it and I would drag them over, either have every all the folders together on the, I think I drag it right on top of there. You'll see it light up blue where it's going. And then you'll have can all, all the folders on one side. And so you don't have folders here, or tabs, I meant not folders tabs here, tabs down there, tabs over here, and then over here. That's a lot of tabs, so the best thing is to keep them all in one section, either on the left or the right, depending on what you works for you visually. Um, and then as you can see, mine's, you got thumbnails, and then you've got a preview. You can have your set to do, you know, one quick strip of thumbnails like this, and then your preview over here. I prefer to have my preview on top so I'm going to click the tab and as you see it's blue. I'm going to drag it so it lights up blue right above content right there. And then I've got the preview on top and the thumbnails on bottom. I'm going to drag the thumbnails down just a bit so it's more like a, a thumbnail strip and pull that all the way over. And this is how I set mine up. It works best for me. Um, once you figure out what you want to be you can click um, new workspace, this down arrow up here, I'm oh, sorry. This down arrow right up here, this is where all the uh, workspaces are. Click the down arrow, click new workspace, name it, whatever you want to name it. Um, It also you can also save your window location so if you wanted this is going to save my actual window location or you can just turn that off and not have it and it also can do your sort order that you have by default that's right now and it can save that part as my workspace which I will click yes my um, sort by type right now is by or sort by is by type you can change this to file names because um, usually I have my PSDs, I don't have them in this one, but usually my PSDs in the same folder while I'm working. So that's why I put them all, that way it puts all my PSDs all the way at the end, and I can quickly go down and see them instead of having them intermingled in there. But eventually, once I'm finished, I move all my PSDs into a different folder. PSD, if you didn't know, is a Photoshop uh, file with all the layers involved. So once I've got that set up, and I've got my workspace saved. I also have, um, this is your folders, you can go through and pick your folder out. You can also do your keywording right here. I don't use keywording at all. So um, my favorites, what we're going to do is, I'll show you how to do it. You can hit Windows, Favorites, Panel, and it'll pop up your panel. And to add a favorites on there, you can click up here to go through your folders. I want to go to my pictures, or I could have clicked I have my favorites. Or you can even go to folders and actually find the folder that you want it in. 
So I want to see my pictures. I'm going to scroll through and find family, which is what I just deleted. And then you're going to drag it like this over into your favorites, and there you go. So now you can quickly access um, folders you use most often. Like this is my photo shoot folder, so I use that one more. So that's why it's always over there. Family, which is all my family photo, personal photos. I have that over there. Um, and downloads is over there too for business reasons. So what I have here and my thumbnail is up there. Let's find an image. It's not very And what we're going to do now is show you how to, sorry, I had the on. <laughs> you can, like I said, you can sort by file names if you want it to be in order so that you can, like for weddings and stuff, you can sort by types, which will be separate your raw, your JPEGs, your any other type of, or type of file and can separate them so you can easily find that section. Uh, date created, that will also help with um, depending on when you took the image, so if you have like a wedding and multiple photographers, like your second shooter, you want them all in one folder, um, you can do the date created, and it should be figure them out also from time, and put them in order, date modified, which is when you edited the rest of them, um, size, so if you want the larger files to the smaller files, your dimensions, resolution. I mean, you can pick anything by labels, which I have no labels right now on these. And so I'm going to go back by file name. This also, this little thing, this is, you click here, the down arrow, and it drops this down to change it. You can also go to up here, oops, view, sort, and then choose here. But it's just quicker to do this little down arrow. This also will change it from ascending to descending really quickly, and so I'm having to go all the way up here to change it. Right here, that was just one quick button to flip it around. A quick way to filter it is to click this down arrow, and you can filter by stars, by labeled items. So, and this is about thumbnail previews. If you want, if you notice that yours is slow at loading, it's probably because you have either high quality on, 100% previews. One of these are on. I just do the um, embedded faster, quicker way, so that I don't have to wait for it to load, and then I'll just go through and rate that as needed. And as you see on here, these little dot 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 right here. Oops. All right, right here, there is one, two, three, four, five, five little dots, yeah. And those five you can do quick ratings on. So, I'm gonna erase that really quick. What you can do to quickly rate them if, as you're going through these, you can go, just click the stars, how you wanna rate them. I only rate I rate images that I'm going to use, so these three are pretty similar. I would choose actually the one I'm using, which would not be that one. It would actually be this one. Because I like her. That looks too posy. That looks more natural. I probably would actually pick them both. And then go through and quickly do it, which is by clicking these little things. If they're not showing up for you down here, it's probably because your thumbnail is too small. Because once you get too... I'm trying to see if it, when it pops away. Yeah, right there, it doesn't show anymore, so you can't rate it. Oh, so I need to just drag this up to make it larger. I like it that size anyway, so that's not a big deal for me. Also, another quick way to do it is if you hit Control Five. And that rates it. Control. It's one, two, three, four, five, depending on how many stars you want to rate. Like I said, I only do one-way rating. I rate it five stars if I'm going to use it. And it doesn't. If it doesn't get rated, it doesn't get used. Either it's similar in posing, or it's out of focus, or whatever. You can. I just. I keep them all, and then at the end, I'm going to delete them all. On this one, I didn't. So I wanted to use it for example. Um, another way to do ratings is if. 
you are looking at your image, hit the space bar, like this one was out of focus. You can use the right left arrows to scroll through them. Um, it may take a while for this to actually load the preview of it, and they may seem out of focus, or they could be out of focus. So it may be, uh, if it's slow at loading, you may not want to use this method. But while you're going through here, you can quickly rate them. And let me pull this down a little bit. Okay. And hit the number that correlates to how many stars you want to rate it. So hit a five, and as you can see down here now, it popped up where it showed that I rated it five. And then you don't hit control or command, you just hit the number that you want to rate it. So right now it's showing my rating, so if I want to do five there. And um, let me get out of this really quick. And show you, let me drag this up, okay. Another way of labeling, if you hit label, you can see the different labels. It's another way to label them, but that takes even longer. And it tells you also the shortcuts. Control 5, which on the Mac is uh, Command 5. You could decrease your writing that way. And there's also labeling if you want to um, use color labels. You can use it's 6, 7, 8, 9, Control. Or like if I was in that one here this way right here. I'm going to pull it down because it shows the rating in the corner. As I'm going through, if I wanted to label this a color, I just it didn't show, I don't think it did. But when I get out of here, sorry, I got a little crazy on my screen there. Um, you can use labeling to separate by color labels. There's red, yellow, um, I think it's green, and a blue. And the best, I don't use labels, but it would be good for um, weddings. Maybe separate your detail shots, your reception shots. You can do it by colors and then also use your, um, that way you can quickly look in when you're going through your filtering. You can actually filter, you know, labeled items and you can sort by labels. So then it sorts them by the labels. You can quickly do that. So all the labels that are together, all the yellows will be together. So you can, if you want to do all the detail shots together, even though you took them at different times, it's a good way to use the labeling system. I don't use it because I usually use um, Lightroom to edit weddings, but we're gonna do. Take off my labels. Okay. So if you find a big, if you want to also another way to do this, and is to go through here, choose images that you like, and then you can hold control down while selecting multiple images, like this. I have four selected, and maybe I want all these I know. Hit control five, command five on your Mac, and it just rated all four of those a five star rating. So once you've gone through and you've rated, and the best way is I filter all my five stars out, so I know these are the ones I'm going to be working with and editing with. They're going to be my final product. Um, then I'll just go and edit. Let me see what else. I okay. And what you do once I have these? I, the reason why I do this filter is so that I can. That's how I call them through. So I can have all my files still there, but then why I don't get have to sort through all these and try to find the ones I rated. I just click my filter, show my five stars, and then I can only see these so I can work with these and not be having to go through all my other full files. But I can still keep those files there, just not have to see them when I'm editing. If you need to um, open recent files, it's there. If you want to create a new folder, you can hit this little guy, and it will, if I do it correctly, sorry, um, you want to clear your filter first, I forgot about that. Create new folder, it's going to pop up a new folder, you can label it, um, whatever you want to call it, you know, like my pics. <laughs> and if you want to also label that five, so then you can clear it out, show your five stars. 
the folder shows up also. And then you can choose these images and then drag them into your folder. So you can even separate it even more so you can just go into that folder and work with what's in the folder. On that. And um, I'm going to go over another quick, really quick, I almost forgot about this. Another amazing thing that I use in um, Bridge is batch processing them images. Um, I'm going to, what I'm going to do is show a really quick example. Usually I would already have opened these. These are all raw files in ACR, which I'm going to do a separate video on ACR, which I'll show next week probably. I'm going over all in depth more of what ACR does. So I haven't opened up any of these in ACR. Generally I would open them up and corrected um, any of the white balance issues and um, any exposure issues that I have which I usually try to get everything right in camera, but sometimes, as you know, it doesn't work out. <laughs> you take a great shot, you didn't pay attention to your settings and change, and the lighting did. So anytime I have an issue with exposures or white balance, I would have changed it in ACR first, but I just want to show really quickly how to do a batch. What you want to do is go to Tools, and then you can actually batch rename if you want to rename all your files to incorporate the family's name or the wedding name. You can hit Batch Rename and rename all your files, you can actually rename them into a different folder, it saved as a different a copy of these. So you can call them, this is, her name's Cassidy, you can say Cassidy, and then number one, I'll show you really quick, batch rename. You can rename it in the same folder, put it in a new folder, copy to another folder. Um, you can save a default that you'll use, like my last used one was a name, which was, or you can do a default. So, my last use, I usually use the name and then the sequence number. And then you can, or you can just put a name. And then hit the plus. And then you can write whatever you want. Actually, you can type Cassidy, you know, multiple names. You can do the time, an extension off of it. Um, the current file name, you can also incorporate that. And down here you'll see this is the current file name, this is what your new file name will look like. So you can actually see as you click different um, sections what the preview of the file names are going to be. I do usually a sequence number, you can sequence letter. So I generally don't need three digits on portrait sh sessions because it's only double digits and it tells me my files is going to process. It can also um, make it compatible, which it usually does anyway. And it will show you a preview of what's going to rename all my files for. It says this is my current names of them, which is the file full names, and this is what they'll be now. Cassidy 1, 2, 3. And that's good if you don't want people to see your file names, like how many. Because sometimes when people see the numbers of like, well, you know, you got 39 and there's 68, why is there so many images missing? I don't usually have that problem, but I know how people can be, so <laughs> it's preferable what you want to do. If you rename the same folder, it's going to rename all these right here. You can also, like I said, copy it to another folder, so you can have these still originals here, and then find a new folder, make a new folder up, and then copy it over there. Or you can take all these, rename them, and then move them into a separate folder. Which I'm not going to do any of that right now because I just wanted to show you that really fast. On the batch rename, another thing I do is batch processing. You can batch process by hitting batch, and it's just like how you batch in Photoshop when you batch in there, which I'll go over another time too. But what I'm going to actually do is an image processor. Batch image processor. I have all the ones selected that I want. And this bad boy pops up. Um, it says process files from bridge only. This one is, if you hit this, you can open up them into ACR. If you already did your ACR edits, you don't worry about it. It will save them in the same location. I'm going to save them as a JPEG. Convert to sRGB. And then I can also go down here, preferences, run my action that I want. I'm actually going to use a new, an altered action that I have used recently. Um, you can also include your copyright information that we embedded on there. So when I upload and people like when I upload my images into Facebook, 
it will show that copyright, which I usually delete because I don't need it on there, but it should show that copyright information embedded on there. Sometimes, although I hear Facebook is stripping that down now, but file type, I'm doing it as a JPEG, like I said. You could also just save it as a PSD if you want to hurry up and run a whole bunch of them through really quick. Like, sometimes I'll do this, and then if i got stuff to do, I'll save them as PSDs. Go in the other room, I can save them as multiple. So I can save them as a PSD and a JPEG, and then I can go in the other room and do whatever I need to do. Get stuff done, because my computer's kind of slow. And then come back and then it'll all be done for me. This um, will include your profile, your color profile, which is important to do. Um, although I'm converting to sRGB, so it's going to do it automatically for me. So once I've done that, I just click run. And I let it run. And you can see just a second what it's going to actually do. Maybe in a second. Like I said, this is why I, when I do it, I usually go in the other room and do, get stuff done. So it's going to read my camera raw format. So if I've made changes in camera raw, it's going to incorporate those. And then it's going to open this file up. My raw file is going to open up in here. It's going to apply the action that I said to apply to it. And it's going to flatten my image. Save it as a JPEG. And then it will do it again to all files that I have selected in Bridge. So it's going to take a minute. I'm going to pause it while it does this and I'll show you where it goes. Alright, and that may take um, a few minutes, a few seconds. It depends on your computer. Mine needs more RAM, so it processes pretty slowly. So this is a really quick way for me to quickly edit images. I usually save it as a PSD, but I'm just showing you how to do it as a JPEG. Um, I can run that action, save it as a PSD, go do stuff, and now you have to worry about doing extra steps or anything like that. I can be doing other things. Um, while this is running, I can be you know, browsing on Facebook, wasting time, or you know, doing dishes. I work at home, so obviously I also run a house, so this is also good if you want to go and get things done around your house. And you can also, you know, like I said, you can run any action at the end. You can pick any action you wanted. I just used one I created with a, it's that simple and clean from Workflow Wonders. It's a copy of it because I added um, a couple extra steps at the end with a, a gradient map, which adds some tone to it. Um, which I'll probably go over all, I'll be going over all that stuff later about adding tones and stuff like that in another video, but it's going to be a little while. Um, so what you could do is when you are in Photoshop, create an action that you want to use. It also incorporates um, closing. I didn't have a close on this, so that's why they're also open in Photoshop. But they're actually all saved. If I click over back on Bridge, there's now a new folder called JPEG. And I can open that folder. And this is because I... I don't know. This is one that I had on there earlier. And I don't know why I didn't delete it. Yes. Okay. So now my action that I used, it ran it, and this is just the JPEGs. It flattened it, saved it as a JPEG for me really quickly. So I didn't have to do all those steps if I wanted to do that. And save it as a Photoshop file, PSD, I could have done that and not had to, it wouldn't be flattened. I could go in and open up and tweak my layers as needed. So it's whatever works best for you. And then you can go in here and close out, and I'll be saved. This is a good way to batch process a large amount of files. I usually save it as PSD. That way I can actually, once this is all done running, I can go in and um, open up each one and tweak them. That actually, that, um, let me add, run it on three of these so I can show you. Not all ten, because it takes too long for my computer image processor and we're going to click that off and save it as a PSD. And as you can see it also says resize to fit so if you wanted to do a web size version you could do that. I'm also going to run the same action but save it as a PSD so you can watch. We'll do that really quickly. Alright, and now it's ran all three of those. Sometimes it pops up this script alert. It says that it could not process them. Um, 
it's just a little error there because it actually did process them for me. As you can look when I click over back on bridge, there's a PSD file. And I have all three of these in here. Um, like I said, that one, it's actually a new action I was playing with um, for my personal photos. But I have a black and white. So if I wanted to quickly change it to black and white or I wanted to do no tone, I can do that. I made changes, sorry. And then you can incorporate a close on your action, so it actually would have closed out all these, which is good for large amounts. Oops, sorry, I hit the wrong button. So now I can go in and open my PSD file, so then I have all those um, layers all there, so I can quickly and open them and tweak them as needed per image. And like I said, for this actual action, I incorporated a black and white conversion on there, so I can change that on there and play with my layers as is needed. Um, I think that is the main things that I use in Bridge. I use batch, yeah, sorting, my workspace, and yep, that's everything that I I use. There's a plenty of other million things that you can do in Bridge. It's super powerful. I see the only thing I think is I use um, output and I do create um, PDFs in Bridge, which I am create another video on, it's on my YouTube channel on creating a PDF with one of my templates through Bridge. So that's the only other thing that I really use it for. I don't do any of the keywordings. If you do keywords, it's great to use that, but <laughs> I don't use them for me. And then you can also do stacks and collections, which is what um, Lightroom does too, is collections and stuff like that. So you can even incorporate that. If you have elements, you have a organizer, um, I would do a video on it. But I really do not like the elements organizer. I don't think it's very intuitive. Um, and I always recommend people with elements to get Lightroom because of the its raw processing abilities far outweigh the ACR that is included in elements so what you get in um, photo like your Adobe Camera Raw is more stripped down in elements so if you get a Lightroom to incorporate with your elements I mean you're pretty much set on what you need you don't even need full Photoshop because you can do all your ACR edits in Lightroom it's just Lightroom edits and um, and then any other head swaps and stuff you can pull in Photoshop or any creative actions and stuff like that creative coloring mask thing you can pull in Photoshop and play with that stuff if you need to otherwise you can just use your Lightroom to do your organizing and to quickly edit a whole bunch of images sorry I, I like I said I recommend anyone with elements to uh, purchase Lightroom it's not that big of a purchase and usually you can get on sale, which is great. And its uh, capabilities are amazing for organizing and for batch processing a whole bunch of images at once because Elements kind of restricts on that. Um, there's ways around it, but it's just kind of um, extra work that you don't really need to spend time on when you can just do it in Lightroom, sync them across your images, and then pull it into Photoshop if you need to run an action or something like that really quick. So hopefully this was helpful. It is almost 30 minutes long. I, I ramble. I There's a lot of rambling. I'm sorry about that. I'm rambling right now. <laughs> Alright, thank you guys.